TLO, what's poppin'? We are on kick, K I C K dot com. We are not live. But you can leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells, man. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Um, this above me. If we do go live and you happen to miss it, this is where any uh, things that matter go. We also got the merch. We're in it right now. If you order something, it is on the way to you. If I, uh, uh, we do got the Patreon. Appreciate everybody who's a Patreon member. You know what I'm saying? We got Afterlife dropping today. Uh, you know, we post five days a week. We don't post on Saturday and Sunday. So, yeah. And we got the Discord. But this is the Deadly Divide in Tottenham. Tottenham. Tottenhammers. <laughs> you get uh, OFB and NPK. Didn't we just watch something on Channel 4, a documentary? That's what's up. Let's get into this, man. Kid Nerd, salute. Throughout the rise of UK drill, Freedom. we've seen many artists and groups' relationships crash and burn. But not many has been as infamous and televised than two groups in a North London town called Tottenham. Today, we'll be looking into the rise and fall between two drill groups called MPK and OFB and how their friendship turned into eventual tragedy. Let's get into it. I normally don't like to pay attention to like beefs and Things of that nature, but y'all want me to watch it. I know y'all do, so here I am. <laughs> Let's get negative. Guys, before I get into this video, I just want to say a quick message to a lot of the young watch these videos that have done the way forward. A lot of young too they battles creep financial programs and not much possibilities out of this life except death or jail. Now let's get into the video. So like I said before, we're taking this story to the North London town of Tottenham. Now Tottenham is infamous for many reasons. It's bred some of the biggest artists in the UK, stemming from global pop stars like Adele and major grime artists. Adele from Tot Tottenham? Such as Skepta and Chip. And now ah. big draw artists like Hedy One and Abracadabra. In the last few decades, Tottenham has also been notable for a lot of violence and crime. Infamously, the area of Tottenham has been known for igniting big uprisings, like the Broadwater Farm riots in 1985 and the London 2011 riots, which put the country into a national lockdown, which is a topic for another video. But also, a lot of gang warfare has plagued the community, especially in recent years. See, Tottenham is a big area spanning across two different postcodes n15 and n17 with many different estates yeah i think drake mentioned n15 in, the, in that song with central c it's and clicks but today we'll be focusing on the n17 side of the town which is a side more notorious for violence than the other so let's take it back to the 1970s to a big house in the state inside tottenham called broadwater farm inside this estate the formation of a group called the tottenham oh, mandem people. was created the tottenham mandem throughout the 70s to the 90s built up a big reputation for violence across london they were big players in the london drug market and notoriously had many deadly feuds of other groups across London to the point where the Met Police ranked the Tottenham Mandem as the second highest group in London's organized damn he put bro dad in every picture crime network and the group spread their influence all throughout Tottenham with members all over the town then in the early 2000s the vads inside the group caused members to disband which resulted in several different offshoot groups who started repping their specific estates or sections of Tottenham one of these you know what's crazy divided we fall together we stand that's what anything <laughs> once you start dividing it's going downhill Beasts will start over money and land uh, and, 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 and power. Like, you know, that's how uh, that's how wars are started. <laughs> like, real wars. So, obviously, with people like in these areas, it's going to be the same thing. 
These areas being in the Broodwater the Farm estate, which was the original area of the Tottenham and them. And another was an area located less than 10 minutes away called Northumberland Park. Members of the Tottenham and them from Broodwater Farm started rolling with the name Star Gang, now known as OFB. And members from Northumberland Park started calling themselves MPK. For the most part, MPK and OFB members had a... Moving from Star Gang to M M uh, OFB, the name, that was a W choice relatively good relationship with them both Not having this and star gang star gang is crazy that's a crazy name same enemies being two nearby areas called Wood Green and Edmonton, who Tottenham have been feuding with for a while now. The feud between Tottenham and the two local areas started to be more known when UK rap music started getting platformed on several YouTube channels like Limitless Vids and Pac-Man TV. A few MPK members like Stretch and Starts and OFB members like Heady One and RV started hopping on tracks together cementing their relationship in the public eye. OFB members dropped tracks like Youngers from Farm which was making noise all over North London. But summertime 2010, an OFB member called Young RV dropped a big tune called Cruddy on the Streets, which really put a spotlight on OFB as a whole. An MPK rapper called Stretch was also putting on for Tottenham Musically, dropping tracks at Sky Style and Thanks Mummy. Stretch and RV were actually quite close friends. But in a situation in 2011, Stretch was stabbed by members from the nearby area Wood Green. Allegedly, RV was with him when it happened but ended up running away, leaving Stretch to have a deep hatred for RV and other OFB members. Stretch addressed the situation on a track called You're Not Cruddy on the Streets, which was a direct diss record to RV, which left both sides to have a bit of a shaky relationship. For the next few years, both sides weren't generally the closest, until the late 2010s when the new generation of Tottenham were coming up. Kids from both Northumberland Park and Broadwater Farm grew up together through school and playing out, and a lot of families crossed between between both areas and despite the past issues between the two parts of Tottenham the next generation of kids managed to maintain their tight relationships even after they started claiming their areas gang in 2017 to 18 a lot of the spotlight from the UK drill scene was on Tottenham a few MPK members called GP Unks and KK started going up in music calling themselves Sin Squad hitting millions of views on some of their tracks Good RV days. from OFB had not long come out of jail for a 2012 stabbing case and him and another OFB rapper called Heady One started hopping on tracks together, creating one of the most legendary duos to come from UK Drill. But it hey, stop training people in person. To me Silence that bull. Stop training people in person. What? In early 2018, the younger members from OFB started trying their luck on drill beats. A few of the younger members jumped on a track with an older OFB member called Cash, and the song done decent numbers, considering it was a first track for many of the rappers on the tune. But throughout the year of 2018, the younger members started jumping in the booth more and more, especially three OFB members who went by the name Double L's, SJ, and Band OK. They started dropping music consistently, creating a big buzz. What a great trio it was. SJ, man. I was in the UK. On the back of their success, younger members from MPK also started hopping in the booth, but weren't taking it as serious as OFB, so they weren't releasing much. A lot of their tunes started getting leaked online and posted on YouTube, creating a big underground fandom for the group. These times a lot was going on in North London, and 2018 proved to be a deadly year for Tottenham and surrounding areas, with back-to-back -back shootings, stabbings and murders occurring throughout the year, mainly between the areas of Wood Green and Tottenham and unfortunately this con I don't think there's any new information that I'm getting out of this but that I didn't know from you know I've been doing this six seven years so it's like mm back-to-back -back violence around the towns eventually ended up being MPK's and OFB's downfall. It all started on February the 22nd 2019. The night before this day, a group of boys had drove and parked a Peugeot car inside the Broadwater Farm estate, which would become a meeting point the following day for several OFB and MPK rappers. The next day around 7pm, a group of seven OFB and MPK younger members and rappers set off on bikes armed with a handgun, shotguns, 
swords and machetes, heading for their opposing area, Wood Green. When the group reached a street called Lordship Lane in Wood Green, they spotted four guys who they believed to be part of the Wood Green gang. Once the group locked onto them, they dropped their bicycles and brought out their weapons and started to pursue the four members, with one of the shots narrowly missing the woman who was in a nearby store. The Wood Green members started running into different directions to try and get away, so the Tottenham group got back on their bicycles to try and catch up with one of the victims who was falling behind the rest. They managed to catch up and corner a 20 year old man, then proceeded to stab him 8 times in total and shooting him once in full sight of members of the public. But their attack was interrupted when one of the victims called Kamali managed to retrieve his car and attempt to drive it into the yeah, attackers to save his friend. But once the group saw Kamali in his car driving towards them, they turned their attention towards him, uh -huh. circling his car attempting to smash his windows to get him out. While he was stuck between two cars trying to reverse out, Kamali eventually ditched his car to try and run into a Not gonna lie, Kamali, so salute. I think you passed away, RIP, but this was one of the worst ideas of driving that you could have done. This three-point turn, this is over. You're not making this turn real quick, not swiftly. I would have threw that thing in reverse or something. Like, oh, look, this is... This ain't it. Hairdressers which was nearby. Once he got into the shop he tried to barricade himself inside but the attackers managed to force themselves in resulting in Kamali being struck several times leaving him in a terrible state on the scene. Afterwards the group rode their bicycles back to the Broadwater Farm estate and changing the clothes which they left in the car they parked off the day before. And the, that's the car, the car that they parked before they got y'all on CCTV I remember this year. Rode away. Sadly Kamali didn't make it and his death was announced the following morning. In the next few months, one by one each attacker was getting arrested and remanded. At a time when the OFB were reaching the highest numbers in the UK drill scene. Two you know what's crazy man? I don't want to start any allocations or anything, but somebody, somebody opened their mouth. They was all masked up, I remember that. Even though they had CCTV footage, Somebody got scared of him. Yeah, he, he this guy asking somebody. Somebody was in there talking. We just don't know who. A few days before this attack well, maybe on Kamali, we do. SJ from OFB alongside two other OFB members released their biggest tune yet called Next Up. And now stuff was looking real for SJ after he was getting investigated for allegedly being on the scene on the day. During this time, SJ started hitting the booth heavily, dropping some big tracks, building his name to be probably one of the biggest drill artists out at the time. But a couple months later, the tragedy of K1 caught up to SJ in the worst type of way. SJ Alongside other OFB members were invited to a freestyle session hosted by the well-established DJ called Tim Westwood on a series called Crib Sessions, which in 2019 was one of the biggest platforms for UK drill artists to go on. So it was a big statement that OFB was invited to go. But in one of the most unfortunate turn of events, halfway through the Crib Session, SJ got a call from the police to inform him that he was wanted for the murder of Kamali and that he was to hand himself over to police immediately. You can even see halfway through the freestyle that boy was angry shook blue he was mad as hell right at this point sj's mood starts to change realizing that this may be his last day of freedom for a very long time not long after assalamu alaikum if you're a muslim who's fed up with your job and you want to Lesson, SJ hands himself in and now with five out of the seven suspected attackers locked up awaiting trial for the murder of Kamali. It wasn't long before there started being issues between both OFB and MPK members in jail regarding the case. Quite early on there was rumour circulating that one of the MPK members who was on the case, who goes by the name of Osav, was starting to snitch on the situation. Ain't no other reasoning, there's no other way. If anybody keep it, they ain't got nothing. Period. But as soon as they looking for that weak link, somebody in the, somebody got to saying something. That's how it always go. Allegedly implicating other members in the murder. A few OFB members had stuff to say about it on Snapchat. Building tensions and situations between MPK and OFB inside and outside of jail. On October the 8th, 2019, the trial officially started and the tension was high in the courtroom. I'm not saying that that was the guy or not who was stitching. I don't know what if y'all confirmed that over there or not. 
but I just know the layout of how that normally goes. Seven people involved, masked up. Nobody really. They don't. They got a, a lead, but somebody got the somebody got the speaking on it. That's how it normally goes. Somebody get to speaking where they shouldn't speak, and boom. Whole case solved. <laughs> Several teenagers who hadn't even started their lives properly yet was looking at going to prison for the best parts of their life and emotions were high in the cool. Not too long before the start of the trial, SJ had even been offered a £155,000 record deal while awaiting trial for the murder, which was a big sign that if he managed to beat this case, there was another life waiting for him on the other side. But the trial didn't go well and it wasn't long till the jury handed their guilty verdict for all the five young men. At the sentencing, Ooh. They tried them all five together. Man, low key, if I, man, I've been trying to get myself tried separately. Don't charge me with them. Because all they got to do is prove the burden on, on the five. Take me up out of there. Charge me alone. Let me go. No, I don't want no Cody's. <laughs> I don't know if you could do that in that case, but shoot. Hell broke these. MPK members and SJ started to fight and yell abuse to each other in the courtroom in front of the judge. And when they were all sentenced to between 21 to 28 years each, the room turned into chaos. Chairs and other bits of furniture started to get thrown into the docks. And all the defendants started to get separated after repeated violence between each other. One of the defendants' stepdads even leaped from the stands and started to threaten the judge, screaming that he will murder him after the sentence was announced. The tension continued outside the courtroom when families and friends of the five defendants started to argue outside. Not long after, SJ and other OFB members took to Snapchat to say their side of the story, labelling the MPK members as snitches on the case, which overall was the real start of the break-off between both MPK and OFB. And members on both sides were making this publicly known through social media. But soon after the sentencing, on the 19th of February, 2020, stuff started getting physical between both sides. Three OFB and MPK members bumped into each other at a local barbershop, which ended with two OFB members being stabbed and slashed multiple times. Man. A CCTV video of the situation leaked, which was posted all of- So they really do be using them swords, huh? That's a whole samurai sword in bro hand, that's tough. around social media, bringing awareness to what was happening on the streets of Tottenham. On the music side, while SJ was locked up, more new rappers started coming out of OFB, releasing tunes off the back of the success of other OFB rappers. One of these being an OFB member who went by the name of Ispot. He blew up from a single he released called 3S, and after a couple- What happened to Ispot? Ain't he, was he, didn't he get locked up for a little bit too? I ain't heard nothing from Ispot and since maybe last year. A couple more big songs he dropped throughout the year. A lot of fans were saying- He was one of my favorite too. And soon he could hit the same level as SJ. But in September of 2020, the ongoing feud between MPK and OFB caught up to him. His pot was on his way home from college on the train. But when the train hit a station called Meridian Water in Edmonton, three alleged MPK members spotted his pot sitting near the window on the train. In front of shocked onlookers, the three MPK members proceeded to stab his pot multiple times, striking mainly his lower back and face. One of the strikes actually ended up hitting one of his eyes, damaging his vision. But thankfully, Ispot survived the attack. Three MPK members were actually Damn, I, did I hear about that? Held after CCTV footage caught them in the act. During these times, OFB and MPK were taking shots at each other on drill songs. OFB rapper Bando K dropped a song called Patient, which had several disses aimed at MPK. A couple MPK rappers also dropped a song in early 2021 called Exposing Ops 2.0. They actually Heard filmed it. part of this track on the OFB's block, The Broadway. I remember Farm. this. This is when the negativity would add it, as it, as it, at its height. This is the height of negativity. Estate, which caused a lot of attention in the UK drill scene. Another drill group around 10 minutes away from OFB's block was also starting to get some attention in the drill scene called TPL. They dropped a track called Philly Don't Dance, which had multiple oh, disses towards to OFB. Me. TPL and MPK actually started linking up and eventually filmed a music video together for a track which featured both groups called Hitcock 45. They filmed this video outside Turnpike Lane train station in the M15 postcode and 
Many members from each side started posting the location of the music video on Snapchat and other social media. After the shoot was done, a few members were still posted outside the train station and unfortunately a few shots were fired into the crowd of boys around 1am, with shots hitting a 20 year old TPL member who went by the name of Showerman, sadly killing him on the scene. The same day, MPK's area in Northumberland Park, Tottenham, was also shot up with a young man being shot multiple times, but thankfully survived, causing a lot of friction in Tottenham. A few months afterwards, an MPK member who went by the name of KY and his friend took a trip near the Broadwater. So MPK beef and OFP, OFB beef is over snitching. Is over snitching. It's really over SJ getting locked up. Not even gonna lie, that's valid. <laughs> that's valid. I I would beef y'all if I was like if SJ was like, come on man, free a hey, free SJ. I'm not picking no sides, but dang, I get it. I don't condone it. It is violent, but you know, R.I.P. to everybody. Ain't no coming back from it now, but. Our mistake. When they reached, they spotted an OFB member called Sits and his friends sitting down on the bench. KY approached Sits while we were sitting down and the two started to argue. KY grabbed Sits's phone from him, which resulted in Sits slapping KY in his face. Afterwards, KY brought out a large knife from his trousers, stabbing Sits three times and then made his escape. Sadly, Sits didn't survive the attack and mobile tracking caught KY in the app, resulting in him getting caught and sentenced to 19 years. Throughout the last few years, there's been numerous back and forth situations between the two groups, and with both areas being so close together, causing paths to cross all too often. Unfortunately, more situations more than likely will carry on happening. It's been your boy Kid Nerd, and peace out. I don't think that no more information can ever be put onto these videos. I think their time has come and their time has gone. Like, okay, they still beef, the beef was forever, but like. It is what it is at this point. But I'm not going to lie. I didn't know some of this stuff. But tell her, leave a like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what y'all think of this, man. I'm gone. Free SJ at the end of the day.